This is a, a story of a Missouri artist that um, came this close to being lost. I think it, a gift and a miracle that uh, these drawings were saved. It's a great story. This gentleman contacted me and told me he had a booklet of pictures that he had found when he was just a youth in Springfield, Missouri. And uh, he said he had uh, held on to these pictures for uh, 40 years. And I'd put them on my website. I went on eBay and saw these drawings and I thought they were pretty amazing. So I immediately contacted the owner it was nighttime when I arrived and I began looking through the drawings and uh, my hands were shaking. They were an intact portfolio by a single artist at an asylum drawn on paper from the hospital which immediately validated where these drawings were done. I knew that these were very rare. I presented the portfolio to Harris and he began looking at the drawings and I, I could see in his eyes the same thing that I felt. The album itself is, is, is just gorgeous. He made it out of found cardboard, fabric, and leather. Part of the found cardboard was a, uh, a, a glossy red box cover that was embossed with baseballs. They say Spalding on them. He lovingly bound these, even hand-stitched the, the, the binding together. So this portfolio was very important to him. The electric pencil, which uh, the name is incidentally uh, basically a fiction that I created because we still don't know the identity of the electric pencil. The name was based on the title of a single drawing. The drawings were found in 1970 in a trash heap by a 14-year-old boy. The album consists of uh, 140 two-sided drawings, 280 pictures, plus uh, three single-sided drawings done on note paper. He also took a lot of care to number all the pages, probably after he bound them into the book itself. We're dealing with an artist who's incredibly precise about rendering the things that are most important to him. I see that uh, in the best artists, people like Henry Darger, people like Martin Ramirez, and I see that with the electric pencil as well who is the most significant, certainly in terms of the body of work and the quality of the work that's been discovered certainly in the last 10 years uh, in the outsider art field. We made a website that was devoted to uh, solve this mystery. We did an outreach. Part of that was getting in touch with the uh, Springfield News leader. They were really interested in uh, and it's a broadsheet, and, and they plastered a million illustrations and wrote a really thorough, terrific article. It was by happenstance that I even saw the article that came out about uh, a Nevada mental patient and looking for the artist, and I thought, oh my gosh, this is Edward stuff. I know it's Edward stuff. I thought, I've got to call my sisters. Edward himself was... Uh, born in the uh, Panama Canal region where his father was uh, a sailor uh, and paymaster. He was born in 1908 um, and they lived there uh, till the time he was four years old.
After his duty was up there, then uh, Grandpa Dades moved everybody back down into uh, Ozark and Christian County. He was always um, a person that could go out and hide in plain sight uh, with the animals. He could have lived off the land. They had the farm to work, and Grandpa Deeds was an authoritarian because his father was. He wanted to have his children learn how to follow directions and do what he said. In your adolescent years, you push the envelope, and I'm sure Edward was no different. And I think his father thought that he was just a constant burr under his skin. My dad, it would totally bring him to tears when he was talking about Edward's relationship with his father. There was always a lot of friction there. The family had a cabin built for him right near the Finley River on the family property. And figured that they could keep him in there to try to make peace with everyone. But he would go up to the house from his cabin and, uh, and start hollering and frightened the girls. That, that was one of the big things. He frightened the girls. My dad could be a prankster and I'm sure that he just did something to irritate Edward and Edward was not going to play games that day and he threatened him. I think Grandpa Deeds took that as a like a big warning that oh he's dangerous, he's violent and that's whenever he started the ball moving on getting him uh, committed. He was committed for his entire life. One of the big, big question marks is what was this man doing in a hospital for 50 years? People often were committed for years and years and years. It was easier to put your wife out there than to get a divorce. And then once she was there, you had grounds for divorce. The Kirkbride Asylums were founded on a plan written by a Dr. Thomas Kirkbride and it was called Moral Treatment. And the idea was that mental hospitals should be kind of utopias for mental patients. At the time that I first was employed there, there was a farm, there was a garden. This was a self-contained community. Everybody who was able worked and would have gotten a great deal of gratification from producing something tangible. We were a family. We had fun. And the patients were part of our family. His incarceration spanned transformations in the field. Preferred therapy of the time was electroshock therapy. We have terrible stereotypes about ECT, about it being this kind of terrifying, scary, shock treatment. It was something that the patients were afraid of for obvious reasons. Um, it, it just produces a convulsion. One of the most haunting pictures of all is the one of a doctor and underneath it it says, why doctor? My first impression was that the uh, artist was perhaps dyslexic when it was revealed to me that the electric pencil was uh, subjected to ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, shock therapy. I looked at the drawings in a different 
way he spells electric pencil ECT out clearly twice in that word. Well, that seemed pretty clever. There are two other pictures where the letters ECT just appear. Is it possible that the cigar represented a piece of wood that might have been used to hold the patient's tongue down? We simply haven't had the drawings available long enough to really begin to understand what might be a kind of symbolic uh, language in the pencil's drawings. Fantasy certainly has something to do with biographical reality, but it's highly disguised, distorted. That's how fantasy works, and that's how art works. It was very important for the family to go see him. Every four to six weeks, they would all load up and go, and they would spend time with Edward. I know it was important for my dad. We'd have a, a picnic, usually under this one uh, great big shade tree they had there. And he was always very happy to, to see us. He'd smile and, and uh, wave, and, and uh, uh, he'd have his pad you know, with him, and he was drawing constantly. Mother had a relationship with Edward uh, after she met my father. One day she, when we were down there, she had a hat with a feather in it. And, uh, and Edward just begged her for that feather. He just took a hold of it like it was a treasure. I got to watch him draw. It just looked like somebody had actually laid the feather down there. He obviously liked ladies with black hair. Their clothes are quite beautiful, although the clothes that he draws typically would not be clothes that someone would have worn when he was a patient. He, he's so solidly in the in the 20th century with such a, a strong affinity to the 19th century. His drafting is beautiful and uh, his, his forms are just, he's this American boy, his eagles look like Bellamy eagles. One of the fascinating things about this work is that aggression is more notably absent. You know, this is a much more pastoral world Deeds presents. This one uh, visit in particular was, uh, I had brought my crayons and my color book with me. And uh, he said, let's see you make a rainbow. So being a young kid, I was, of course, making it very dark as I, as I colored it. He said, oh no, he says, that's not what a rainbow looks like. He said, rainbows are fluffy. He said, let me show you. And he started drawing the rainbow and it just was turning out beautiful. The eyes are the first thing that you're drawn into. At first they may seem repetitive, but if you study the faces, there are great variations in expressions. The gaze changes too. Some appear inwardly turned, others seem to be gazing outward. It's very rare to find a group of drawings that are whole, that come to us as a body of work, that allow us to assess both the character of the artist and the importance of the drawings in a larger context. I looked at it as uh, a single individual's private world, which is a rare and beautiful thing. The color of the paper with the oxidized edges on the, uh, on the, on the drawing, and they look like treasure maps, but they're the real deal. And, uh, I mean, I think they do lead you to actual treasure. Uh, my grandmother had kept all the drawings that Edward had given to her and she gave them to my father, and they had put them up in the attic for safekeeping. I came upon uh, Uncle Edward's uh, drawing book, and I found the page uh, with the rainbow he had drawn with me that day. So I took it to my mother and asked her if she would please cut this out for me. She got onto me and, and you know, said, no, you don't ever bother this again. So she put it back up in the attic. Uh, we were moving in 69, and 
Uh, my father had asked two men that were helping us move. Uh, it was getting late in the day, and he asked them if they would clean out the attic. They could have whatever they wanted. When my mother found out that all of her keepsakes and cherished items that were up in the attic were taken out and dumped, she was just heart sick. She was angry for a year. She never got over that. She was really upset. To finally learn the identity of the electric pencil, uh, it brings the whole story of the discovery full circle. It's not so much that this work takes us back to some sort of primitive stage of humankind. And it doesn't take us back to a childhood either. What it does is show us that the desire to make work is really central to what it means to be human. I could picture him wearing out the album by walking around. They were like a uh, talisman. I think he had this need to go to a place of comfort and formal calm. And the result of, of that was these drawings that he made.